this is the Scorpion uh, solar panel, portable solar panel. Uh, they come in 120 watt, 200 watt. Obviously, the 200 watt's the better one. Going to carry one around. Might as well have some decent power. Comes in a nice hard case. That's that's a um, hardish case, so it's nice and protected. And it's just a bifold panel. It's got a nice sturdy frame, handle, good patches, and built-in legs with an extension lead. Well, not an extension lead, just a long lead. So these just um, slide out like that. You lock them off. And you face the sun. We always want to know how long your batteries are going to last. It's a difficult question to answer because there are so many variables. The weather, how often you open your fridge and close your fridge if you've got kids in and out all day. So how often you compress it if your fridge is turning on. But general rule of thumb, you use uh, 50 to 60 amps a day and that's um, roughly half of one battery. So you have two batteries in this system, so you have uh, two days worth of power before you need to start recharging. If you have a solar panel, it's a different question. To use the solar panel, it's quite simple. You just plug it into the Anderson connector here. Like that. You can also plug it into the Anderson connector at the front of the, the uh, camper that is also used for charging the car while you're driving. Um, so, you can see what's going on there by turning on the power. And you can't really see it there, but we have 13.3 volts. Now, when the panel is not plugged in, you can see immediately drop down to 13.1 volts. So that's how you know your solar panel is actually charging, the voltage goes up. As the panel remains connected a little bit longer, it's, it, it still increases, so we're up to 13.4 now. So it's a nice sunny winter's day. Roughly, you'll get uh, seven, eight amps an hour out of a 200 watt panel that could increase to 9, 10 even um, in ideal conditions, but rarely do you get ideal conditions. So when calculating how effective your solar panel will be in covering your daily power usage, um, it's recommended that you just account, you allow for five hours of uh, charging per day, because there'll be cloud cover during the day, there will be uh, shadows that you hadn't expected, from trees or buildings or even your own camper trailer. Um, you, you're going to go away uh, for a while, your, your, your panel won't be charging, uh, facing the sun um, exactly while you're away. Um, all that kind of thing means that yeah, you'll get five hours per day proper charge. So if you're getting eight amps an hour, um, that's 40 amps a day. And um, as I said earlier, you'll be using 50 to 60 amps per day uh, running your fridge, your lights, your, bat, uh, your water pump. The problem comes when um, you get uh, a bad day for charging. Now a bad day doesn't have to necessarily be rain, it can be just consistent cloud cover. Because consistent cloud cover will cut your panels use, um, our power output down to almost zero. You might get one, two amps if you're lucky per hour. So in that situation, after two days, you're going to be out of power and you're going to have to uh, recharge your batteries by some other means. Now the easiest way is to hook your car up and run your car, but that's a very inefficient and um, annoying way to, to get um, a little bit of power in, but sometimes you've got to do it. That's when, um, in those situations, that's when your generator comes out and uh, you can run your gener hook your generator up through a two little 240 volt power uh, charger and um, hook it into the Anderson plug connector and away you go. Um, but generally speaking, for a weekend, you're not going to need anything. Uh, for a long weekend, you're, you're pretty fine as well, as long as you've got a solar panel. 
uh, you're looking at um, a, a week or a two week um, stay, then yes, you may come um, a cropper with your um, battery uh, usage. Um, if you get three, four days of um, inclement weather, then you're going to have to find some other way of charging batteries. When buying a panel as well, another thing to note is that um, the thickness of the cable. Now this is um, uh, six mil squared uh, by two. So you've got red and black, each one is six mil squared. So that um, is, is a nice thick cable. Um, you're not going to get voltage drop. Um, the panel's going to work uh, at its it's going to charge at its maximum efficiency. So um, a lot of the, the old cheapo panels that you get, they save money in copper, because copper is expensive. And you have cheap little wiring. The fittings are not good. You don't have these glands protecting your cable, protecting the inner workings of your, of your panel. So the devil is in the detail. If you're supplying your own solar panel, um, it's very important to have a regulator. Um, the regulator regulates the charge that's going into the batteries. Um, it, makes sure, it makes sure that you're getting the right voltage and that you're not overcharging your batteries. So that's what this is, a little Morningstar uh, regulator on the back of this uh, panel. This is also not mounted to the panel itself, so it keeps nice and cool, which improves, improves efficiency. Um, so there, yeah, that's a good place to have it. If your solar panel doesn't have a regulator, then you can't connect it to those batteries unless it's an emergency and you just want to get out of um, a bit of trouble.